G'day, how you all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, or AKA Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Now today I want to do a painting for everybody. I'm going to put my canvas onto the easel there. And for those who don't know what size canvas I'm going to use and want to know what size I'm going to use, there's the size up there right now in centimetres, okay? 30 centimetres by 42. And just up there, the colours of the paints that I'm going to use. All right, they're going to go up the screen like that. And we can get on with everything, all right? So this is going to be um, quite, I think, a lovely painting. You saw the picture at the beginning. So let's get this all started from the middle. I want to, I've looked at the picture and you study it and work out, okay, you want to mirror image everything. And to get our water, we don't actually have to paint the water. We're just copying the reflections of the top into the bottom, which when the painting's done, it'll create the water. Okay, as normal, I'm gonna lightly spray my canvas with some water. And we'll come down to the palette here. I've got my flowable white paint mixed sitting in retarder. So I wanna load my brush up so I've got my canvas primed, ready to mix and flow paints, okay? All right, this is wet. I might want it a little bit more wetter. I like wetting it because it's not so chalky and wanting with the paint. It allows it to get on there. I'll get some more of this. Now I've got enough on there, I've just got to spread it on. I'm just using a two inch brush to apply this white coat on. Now somebody asked me if my canvases are already primed, do I still put the white on it? Well, I do, it's a habit of mine. I wanna make sure that the surface is blendable and wet. I'm gonna do what I want it to do, okay? All right, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? I've got it all dry, I mean, I've got it all white. Now we'll start putting the colors on. Down on my small palette here, I've got some yellow, which is cadmium yellow, and I'm putting a bit of retarder with that as well. And because it's a small amount of paint, I'm using my smaller brush, which is just my fan brush, and I want to get this yellow. Down from the middle is where I want my horizon line. So I wanna put this there like so, roughly where I want it. And I've gotta bleed it out because I want it to pick up the other colors to change them as well. So that's where I want that. It's not really gonna come anywhere past there. So I've just, I'm pushing that into that white paint that I primed on my board with, okay? It's pushed in there. Now what I want to do is grab my blending brush and blend this so it's soft. Blend it out into the white. And I'm working, this is the very fine, small color in the horizon there. I'm getting it in there. Now that brush, I want to clean on my paper towel. If you don't have paper towels and you know that you're going to get right into painting quite a lot throughout your life, invest in paper towel rolls. Go to the supermarket and buy them. They're, they're real handy instead of finding rags, going through rags after rag. They're nice and disposable. Now I want to get another colour, which is going to be my red gold. You can use an orange, just a plain orange. But I've actually got a colour in a tube that's called red gold from Atelier. And this is a acrylic paint. Now I'm going to do the same again. Get this incorporate onto my fan brush. And I want to um, get this onto there. Come closer. All right, now we're going to get this in there. I want to, I'm just sort of making sky strokes that I can feel that it needs. Something like that, see? Sky strokes. I'll call them sky strokes. 
I'll fade away over here. And now we've got to transfer some of that into the water as well. So we'll load up the brush again, just to get a little bit of sharpiness in here. That's it. I'm trying to leave a little bit of brightness right in the guts there. And we'll do this as well. Okay. All right, now we'll get the water side blended down into the water. Please, with your blending practice, before you try and get it into a painting, if you think you have trouble, if you don't, well, that's fine. But for those of you who have a lot of questions and they have problems blending, practice with your blending. Find a particular brush that you're comfortable with to blend with. Now I'm blending this down into the water area. I'm just getting it to the transition that I want the, the where the two colors are meeting each other. I really wish I had more time to do this, but I'm limited with time, so I've got to sort of scoot along. All right, I've done the bottom, now I'm gonna blend the top. So we'll dance in here a bit, get the, that's it. Now I'm gonna blend that into the yellows there. Bring it out up here. Now this blending, what I'm doing, as I've said before, I'm on and off and twisting and working out what pressure to do it at, either light or heavy, okay? So I'll just explain that to you. As I'm blending, I'm blending, but I'm on and off and blending and, f and using all different edges of the brush, okay? And I'm finding the right pressure that I want to use. I am not just putting it on there real heavy and blending the buggery out of it, okay? All right, now we'll get some more colors in there. Okay, down here I've got phthalo blue reddish shade or a red shade there's the um actual tube that i got so it's actually got a red shade in it all right and i've got that with some retarder as well just so as i know that to me retarder it, it doesn't but in my mind it turns my paints like an oil paint it keeps them wet and everything all right now we want to work out where we want this to become purplish okay so i'm sort of getting this fanning out from the sky there. I'm gonna blend that before we get too much in ahead of ourselves. And by rights, hopefully, where that purple, not the purple, wipe your brush, where that blue is meeting the red, the red gold, we might get that bit of purple shade happening. See how I blend, it's blending, your brush is picking up paint, so you've got to keep bashing it off. We'll get that out up into there. Now that hasn't quite gone purple the way I want it. Let me do the bottom area here. Quickly blend that. So I might add some red into that. Because I've got yellow under there, it's sort of giving it a green shade. All right, wipe the brush. I'm getting a bit of crimson red now. I'm just picking that up on my fan brush. It's got the blue still mixed with it and we'll kind of put that back over there. Let's see if that does what I want. That's okay. Wipe your brushes, your blend. That's if you're blending my way. If you, you got your own ways of blending, that's fine. Now see here how this bottom looks greeny tinged. We'll, we'll put this purple back there as well. And blend that. All 
Right, now what I want to do is merge this a bit more together now that they're on there. So I'm merging those colours there. I'm not worried about destroying the centre bit because I can put that back. Wipe your brush. Now getting that crimson red back onto my brush and putting it back up where it's got to go in the water reflection and over there. I'll get that in there and then I'll quickly put the yellow back as well. Okay, I'll clean my blending brush and I'm getting this yellow danced back into the because this is the actual center of my horizon line. Okay. Now just to finish that off, I want to get some white and just get in here to intensify that middle area. And I'll probably, I'm really mucking around here, but that's what I'm trying to find is the right temperament. I'm using another brush to blend now because that one's dirty. All right, so I'm bleeding this, blending it together with those colors. Wipe that brush. Blending it, blending it, and blending it. Oh, that's coming up nice now. Okay, okay, that's lovely. And what I want is just some sheer whiteness maybe somewhere coming across. I'm finding my movement and then I'm hitting it where I want it to hit the canvas. It's subtle but it's what I want. <laughs> After some nice chunks of phalo blue now to finish this sky off so come down to my palette here I'll put some retarder in this as well because all my paints that I put the retarder in is the sky paints mainly where it's going to be blending all right so we'll get this up there I want to get some white ready as well because sometimes if it's too dark a good splash of white will help us out. All right, now we want to get some more paint on there. Come and I'll get some in the water as well. I want to quickly blend the water. Now, if this was a warm day, no retarder. I cannot blend the way I'm blending now. That is what the retarders allow me to do. I'm going to get this the water straight there like that. Now I want to blend this sky, blend it up in layers. So I'm going to do the first layer. I want like dark and light areas in this blending. That's it. What I'm going to do is spray this because I'm finding it, it's a warm day here in Perth today. See that? It's allowing it to move a bit better again. That's what I want. When it's not moving properly you find that your blending can be a real drag under your arm and it's like what's going on here but it's just a matter of giving it a bit of a spray all right let's put some more in i'll do there first and blend this in a the water side i'm just blending real quick twisting around that'll do wipe my brush 
and we'll pull this across as well, getting our water. Oh, that's all right. Now back up to the sky, we're getting another layer of, see I'm trying to create dark over here again. There we go, I patted it on because my blending brush is gonna be doing all the, the blending. Up here, that's it. Because this is gonna have clouds in it, but they're gonna be, they're not going to be white clouds, they're gonna be dirty type of clouds. I want the certain bits even darker again, so I'm opting for my Dioxine Purple, and I'm putting that roughly where I want it. And we'll put a heap of it down on the bottom here as well. Now I'm going to push that in, wipe my brush, and then we'll scoop that across as well. Down the bottom there, get in there. It. Wipe the brush, now we'll get this up here blended to some darker areas. Alright, I've got me phalo blue, some dioxine, and I've added a touch of Payne's grey into that, just so it's a dark colour. Just something to incorporate on the corners there. Across the top here, it's it's like it's gone like a. I'm just using my fan brush because I can use this to tease it into the colours where I want, and I want some of it probably dancing through here. And maybe a band of it coming through here. And we could probably have some in the water as well. Not too much. That'll do. Now we blend all this. Is that my blending brush? Where's my blending brush? <clears throat> okay. They're a bit darker. Just using the Dioxine on its own and you're blending it, it's taking it to a lighter stage. That's why I've added the blue and Payne's grey to get it a bit depth of darkness in there. Okay, we can see the bit of darkness happening because this is going to lay the foundation for me clouds. And this bottom bit, we're just going to drag it across like that. Okay, I've got it to that stage. Now I want to grab some white. I'm just going to use the flowing white and we'll dance some clouds in there, okay? So come down to my... Hang on a minute, I'm just going to fix up something here. There we go. Come down to the palette here. I'm using the fan brush. Just chiseling it onto there. And we'll get some clouds on here, okay? So they're gonna be, I'm twisting these, they're gonna be kind of dirty. So I'll put one there, I'll grab a blending brush, and we'll blend this into the sky. I'm leaving some bottoms on there. Come in a bit closer. Now the fan brush is slowly dirtying up that paint, but that's all right. And now see, I want to put another one in front of there. Dance him around. These aren't going to be really glowing white clouds. They're just going to be dirty clouds in the sky. Okay, this one there. I want to get some over here, so we'll get a bit uh, sort of danced on and 
mellow it out there. See, I want that to be blending into that dark bottom. Okay, now we'll blend that. What I'm doing, I'm using this brush to create a bottom on the cloud. I'm not blending it down into the atmosphere, okay? I'm blending bits and pieces here and there, but I want it to create the bottom of a cloud just like that and come up a bit all over the place like that. Okay, now I want to put some others here. They're still dirty, they're still whitey blue clouds, so we're going to put some more coming across here and maybe fade out there. So really rub that blending brush and we'll get this blended in a way. Now see this retarder is allowing this to happen for me. That can come over there and get that down into the sky there. I just want something over here. That's okay. Now what I will do, I've got some of my structured white onto my palette down here. Now all that was just the flowing, spreadable, soft white paint. Now this one is my thicker structured paint out of the tube. And now I want to enhance these clouds where I want. So this one back here, I want some more obvious white in it. Not too much. Okay, and we're going to blend that. So we're, now I'm doing it like I normally do. I bl blend the halfway down it into that bottom colour, but keep wiping my brush. I'm using a smaller brush now to blend. Blending that down into there. Tickle the tops a bit. And see, I've got a bit more white on there. So now I've got to clean that brush because it got contaminated. So I'm picking up just pure white all the time on there. And then we'll go again. We'll put maybe just a, a bit here and some there, okay? And then I'm going to go halfway through that and blend it down into here as well. So sometimes your clouds can be have different sittings, you know, just to get them the way you want. Oh, that's all right. I just want to lighten up maybe the top of this one a bit and go out into nothing over there. Using my smaller blending brush again because it's a tight area. Wiping the brush as it's picking up too much paint. Because if you leave all that paint on your blending brush, it could start, you know, just doing all sorts of business. Now I'm picking up some of that darker paint on this brush. I've stabbed it into there. And I just want to maybe blend some of this back under there to get that aspect of, I mean, it's not a realism painting, but I want to get it a bit more real than what it is so get something like that under there create the bottom of those clouds just something like that and maybe a bit over here as well right in the guts I'll get some on my uh, something there that'll do now I want to blend that so it doesn't look like it's just been blobbed on there by some passerby I do want a bit more of a glare in the water here, so I'm going to use some white. Hopefully that's wet enough, I'll just make it wetter. And I'll use my brush to... Yeah, see what that's doing? Alright, before we get too carried away, I've picked up my script liner and I've got some white paint in there. I just want to put some lightning in there. So probably from the center here, I just want these to be very, 
very fine as possible if I can get them. They're just they're far away in the distance and try and keep them as a line. They're so I do find them a bit hard to keep in a line. Twisting, twisting. There we go. There's like a little bit of a lightning bolt line. I'll try and fix this up here. That's it. Because it's lightning. And we'll probably have some more radiating over here. Nope, we don't want too much. We'll probably bring one. Oh yeah, that's nice and thin. That's the way I want it. Just something like that. Get up here. And we'll probably bring one to come down as well. Gotta work out where my water line is. It's probably gonna be about there, so this is gonna be a reflection now. So what I will do, I'll just lightly come across that bit there like so. That's alright. Now I'm gonna lightly redo those just very lightly. And grab that same brush and push that across as well. That'll do. All right, I've done my lightning. I've just touched up the cloud a little bit on the edge here, and then I've reflected all the lightning and whatnot I can into the water. Now I want to grab some green, so I'm going to use a sap green to put some edge bushes and trees and um, foot far ground back into this picture. And hopefully I've got enough time that I can drag some of it into this water. Not all of it, because it's... We'll see how we go. So where's my sap green? Now, I'm having this as my centre and roughly my horizon line here, okay? So I'm starting with um, a stray... I've got forest green and sap green, actually, okay? So I'm going to grab... I've got this brush. It's a one-inch brush, but it's a two-inch... Well, no, it's a one-and-a-half-inch, actually. But it's old and all the edges are fared out. And this is my favourite foliage one. So I'm going to use this. And I'm going to start off with the forest green out into the very middle here. And I want to... That's it. And I want to come across and slowly come up higher. Okay. This is the darkest of my green that I want to be there. And then I'm going to stab it in pieces here and there, but I've also got to keep it into the water where the water reflections are going to be. And it's coming right up to this cloud. And we'll come down here. Now, before we get too far away, I'm going to grab a brush and find my water line and start pulling that down just past it there like that that's it I don't want to come all the way down okay now I'm grabbing the sap green on that same brush and I'm coming in with different like this is like a lighter green now Same scenario. Now we're going to grab that brush we used to pull it down. And we're going to pull down that lighter colour green. Okay. Now I'm leaving that paint on the brush, but I'm just picking up the littlest bit of white. Just to... Where, which side of my brush was I on? Okay, and now we want to put some, there we go, just something like that. 
put that down and we'll pull it down as well. Nice and soft. And then I might come over here. We'll give that a light brush that way. That's it. Now we're going to do the same to the other side. So we're going to start with forest green again. But I, I want to fix this up. It doesn't quite... I want that to come down more here. A bit darker. That'll do. And I'll pull that down as well. Okay, let's start on the other side. Getting it right along here somewhere, that's it. Come across here, I want to leave the red sky in there. I'm just following the same height up and down into the water there. Might need more water on that, it's a bit... See, I've just put my brush in water, see that now it's, it's allowing it to spread more. Get that into there. down into the water. That's the dark colour. Now we've got to pull it down. Keeping this line reasonably straight. A little bit. That's it. Oh. Now we're grabbing the sap green. Which is Pretty similar, but just a tad lighter. Just here and there. We'll pull that down. Like I did the other side, we'll put a touch of white on that. Maybe some yellow as well. Whatever colour tickles your fancy. It gives it like a yellowy green. And we'll put some highlights on here as well. So wherever you're putting those highlights, transfer them into the water there. Just somewhere there, maybe a bit over here. Nothing too much. You don't want it starting to look like a pattern. Lightly. You don't want to scrub that bit away there. I want to put some of that colour over here because that one with the white looks a bit cartoony. Okay. Pull that across. Alright, that's pretty much finished. But see here where the bush meets its reflection. I really want to grab my flat fan head brush because I want to put a bit of dark there, okay? So, not, not much, just the lightest. I want to sort of come up in there, finding some dark bits in this side first. There's some darker shadows in all this stuff, right? Maybe over here as well. Okay, there's our dark shadows, all right? Let's not make them look too brush strokey. Now we can... Get this, that's why I'm using this brush, it's sort of flat and I want to create the shadow just under here in a broken up line kind of thing, right? Grab my pull down brush and in the middle of that black, we'll just pull that down as well. We better put a bit more in there because we haven't got the... There we go, just get the... The blacks in the reflection and it just <laughs> it brings it to life a bit better so let's do the other side pretty similar you watch how easy it is we'll come across here whatever you do up top do down bottom so I've done some up there some in there put a bit up there turn my brush around I'll flatten it a bit more I want some up in here dark Dark. Uh, 
and we'll flatten that off. Try not to bring it all the way, just, just there. Don't come all the way down at the bottom of your painting. All right, and that's just giving it a bit more depth. All right, we're coming up to the end of the painting. I've just grabbed myself a knife. some orange juice today and because I just want to put the lightest reflection so come down to my palette here I've got some structured white and like I've showed before I'm gonna spread it out of my on my palette like butter see the knife it's dirty so I'm gonna wipe it on my paper towel roll I'm gonna get it on its edge and bring it through that paint now see how I bought it through I didn't come through on a straight line I bought it through coming downwards and we'll come up here. Now, like I said before, get these as thin as possible. That's it. I wanna just sort of bring that across there very thinly. Okay. Now, where else we could probably put some in the water just to sink those reflections down, okay? Scatter them, don't think, just go for it. Okay, and that's sort of given our water pretty crystal clear look. Because I got quite a lot out of that one knife. I'll load it up again. And that's it. Now I'll just sign this piece. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a signature on this and a, and a frame. Okay, let's put a frame on here and see how she looks. Go. Okay, I've virtually got what I was achieving, some light clouds over this bush here, the intense of the sun setting with lightning storm in the sky, the clouds, the dark and the lights, and a clear reflective lake. That's not too shabby. Yeah, not too shabby at all. All right, I think I'll call that one Lightning Lake, done in acrylic on a canvas board. Now, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like what I do, tell a friend, but if you don't, tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.